Hello, it's me, the crazy nerd inventor, and coronavirus has made me lose my bloody mind. So let's do a science experiment. Oh my god, I'm dead inside that shit. Holy f So, a lot of the transition metals have a specific characteristic, and that is, is that their salts tend to be very brightly coloured. An example of this is copper. Now, any salt containing copper ions tend to be quite blue, unless uh, it is copper chloride, which is blue, but in a high concentration of chloride ions, it um, becomes sort of green. I think, is, is, that, is that copper hydroxide or copper one chloride? I don't know. In case you're wondering what this is, it's just a very cheap microphone taped to a pen, which I'm using as a microphone, but it, it, it isn't even plugged in anywhere. I'm just holding it. So the chemical I want to make is copper acetate. Now, copper acetate is usually used as a fungicide, but the main reason why I want to make it is just, it's just because it looks nice. It has these um, quite vibrant, um, deep purple sort of crystals, and it's, it's a good demonstration of how vibrantly coloured transition metals can be. Now, the standard way of making copper acetate is to mix some sort of copper base, such as copper oxide or copper um, carbonate, and then to mix that with acetic acid to make your copper acetate. However, I don't have any copper oxide or copper carbonate. Now, I could make copper oxide by heating copper in a flame and then letting that react with the oxygen in the air, However, my parents banned me from using any kind of fire ever since I made that I like fire video. Alright, now let's see what happens. This is much more violent, jeez. Got a match in there. So another way to make copper acetate is to mix copper metal with acetic acid and that will give you copper acetate. However, copper metal is very unreactive and also acetic acid is a weak acid. That means the reaction will go extremely slowly. Although I guess it doesn't matter because coronavirus has given us too much time on our hands. So I'd either come up with a completely different method to make copper acetate. And my first idea, it's uh, well, sucked. My first idea was to make copper chloride by doing electrolysis of salt water with copper electrodes. The idea being once I had copper chloride, I would be able to precipitate it out as copper hydroxide by raising the pH with sodium hydroxide. Then I would be able to take that copper hydroxide, then react with acetic acid to make my copper acetate. However, it never worked. So whenever I tried this, three things would always happen. First of all, the copper chloride would always be in the wrong oxidation state, so we would just float to the top and it would just just mess everything up, and then whenever I try to precipitate the copper hydroxide, it was always just partially hydro hydrolyzed into this stupid, bloody copper oxychloride shit that just refused to hydrolyze fully into copper hydroxide, and then this brown sludge will always just form at the bottom, and then that's where all my copper would be, and it was extremely stupid, it was extremely frustrating, extremely tedious, and I'm still not over it. No, I'm not gonna put that in, I'm not gonna put that in. <laughs> so instead of just trying to make these stupid copper chloride and copper hydroxide uh, intermediate shit, I decided to see what would happen if I just did direct electrolysis with copper electrodes of acetic acid. And guess what? It actually worked! Okay, so you see me here using a copper anode and a graphite cathode, and I I'm using it to electrolyze a 40% solution of acetic acid. Anyway, so after 10 minutes of doing electrolysis, there is, I swear, there is a slight blue purple colour to it. However, this camera is a piece of shit and it just has a rubbish colour depth to it, so it just could not pick it up at all. But I swear the solution did turn purple, but the camera's just showing it as clear. So after seeing the camera couldn't pick it up, I was just like, screw everything, let's just crank the voltage up to maximum. So yeah, I just cranked it up to uh, max, um, the max 30 volts and Looking back at it, it was um, uh, not smart. So uh, it kind of got out of hand and when it came back to it, it literally started boiling. <laughs> oh god, fuck. God, oh, holy shit. Oh. <coughs> god. 
well, um, this is less than ideal. Um, that's hot. Um, hey, so after all of that, we filtered the solution and then we let it evaporate. But before that, I want to, let me tell you something. I am a real goddamn nerd. So I'm gonna just gonna pause the video right here. Hey guys, it is me, um, if future Adam here, trying to edit this damn video, and I'm literally screaming and swearing at my past self for stuttering lows, and I have to do a hell lot of editing just to get something coherent out. So this is the part of the video where I try to explain uh, what the hell's going on in this reaction, and um, it basically, spoiler alert, I fell miserably. So. Um, I'm just going to do a voiceover to compensate for my uh, very shitty attempt to explain what's going on. But um, if you're not, if you don't want to watch the science part of this video, just skip to this time, and um, don't talk about my videos being boring in the comments. So, anyways, I'm just going to assume that you know the basics of electrolysis. That being, we have an anode and a cathode, which we pass electricity in between through a solution. In this case, the solution is acetic acid, and our electrodes are graphite and copper. Now, the cathode is the is the negative electrode. So let's look at what's happening there first. So the acetic acid gives us a bunch of hydrogen ions in solution. These hydrogen ions are negatively charged. That means they're going to be attracted towards the negatively charged cathode and when they reach the negatively charged cathode they gain an electron and become reduced into hydrogen gas and at the copper anode we have well copper and the copper atoms in the anode um, they lose two electrons and they become copper two plus ions these ions go and float freely through the solution giving us copper acetate However, because copper is lower in the reactivity series than hydrogen, um, the copper uh, ions prefer, um, is more favorable for the copper ions to be reduced than it is for hydrogen ions to be reduced. In fact, industrially, this is how we purify copper metal, except that we use copper sulfate instead of copper acetate. So there comes a turning point where the copper ions are in a sufficient concentration to be reduced instead of the hydrogen ions. This is bad because it means that all the copper ions I am getting as copper acetates are being reduced back into copper metal and this will decrease our yield of copper acetate. So at the end of the reaction we do have some copper acetate, however some of that copper acetate will be reduced back into copper metal which collects at the cathode. So after the electrolysis we filter off the copper powder and then I leave the solution out in the sun to evaporate. So it's been a while, the latest batch, uh, some of it has evaporated and there are some crystals there floating about, don't know if you can see, I don't know if you can see those, probably not, but um, there is like stuff crystallizing on the sides and uh, my previous batch and, and my previous batch is um, it's a more concentrated solution so um, there's more crystals that have crystallized you can see there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these crystals because these crystals are going to be the purest and then yeah just collect those crystals let's just evaporate um, some more and collect some more crystals and keep doing that all right so I've let it evaporate and um, I did get the copacity out however I'm just going to do a quick um, recris with some dilute acetic acid and hopefully get some larger, nice and nicer looking crystals. So here we are a few days later. So as the solution was evaporating, uh, these copper acetate crystals were precipitating out and as these crystals were forming, um, I, I, um, I scooped them out. And the reason why I did this is because you can see here all of this sort of white stuff here, that's all contaminants. And I found that the copper acetate will actually precipitate before um, these contaminants. So if you remove the if you remove the copper acetate crystals as they precipitate, um, they should be quite pure, and the contaminants should be left behind. 
So I'm going to transfer these into here. This is the copper acetate I've got from previous batches. And uh, let's move my camera somewhere. And uh, I just uh, enjoy the time that's with me doing this. I would be a terrible drug dealer. So I reckon my copper acetate is going to go right there. There you are. So uh, this is my. Um, collection of chemicals that I've made cover sulfate, manganese hydroxide, copper acetate, and magnesium hydroxide. And also, I have this stuff. This is the copper powder that uh, I've collected at the cathode. Now, this is from the copper acetate um, being reduced back into copper metal, or the copper ions being reduced back into copper metal. And so you can see the copper metal in there along with a drying sachet I put in there, just to look cool. And um, yeah, so this copper powder here should pretty much be um, pure copper, which um, I can use for my element collection. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, uh, ring the bell, leave a comment, share. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I sound bad at this.